also um, point out that the uh, you're, you also point out that, that there's real a cover up here. I mean that that, that the, there, there there was real evidence of, of of a certain kind of of, of incompetence that, that they that no one's admitting to. Well, Bob B says it at one point in the film. Dr. Bob B of University of California Berkeley says full out uh, early in the film in the early stages of what was going on when the independent investigators were just getting going and the Corps was trying to prevent them from reaching what might well have been a crime scene, mm. um, the, where the evidence was uh, that quotes a friend of his is saying, this is a cover-up. Uh, the core, this phrase didn't occur to me uh, until I read a, a piece in the Washington Post a couple months ago. They were quoting a State Department official about the difficulty of dealing with corruption in Afghanistan. And, uh, you know, from his high horse, he said, well, it's because they have a culture of impunity. And that immediately struck a nerve with me because that's exactly what the Corps of Engineers has, a culture of impunity. They get more money no matter how badly they fuck up. Uh, if they fuck up badly enough, they get a lot more money. Uh, not a person, not a soul, not a secretary, not a parking lot attendant in the Corps of Engineers suffered any career consequences negatively for this screw up, this four and a half decade long series of screw ups that almost destroyed a major American city. As a matter of fact, they got a huge amount of new money to do the new system without even a slap on the wrist. Mm -hmm. So in the and, future, no, sorry, go and, ahead. If you, as with uh, the financial system, as with uh, the situation, situation in Japan, as with so much else that we see both in this country and abroad right now, if you don't seriously disincentivize bad behavior, you get more bad behavior. As, the, as we speak right now, the government is on the brink of shutting down, basically. Um, we are in Ashland. Mm -hmm. um, there's a beautiful view out the window down there. <laughs> oh, look! Um, <laughs> and uh, we were trying to give you a piece of it. Uh, you got an award last night. I got the Rogue Award, <laughs> and uh, I'm pleased to announce that it's because the Rogue River uh, flows through here, and this is the Rogue River Valley. I thought it was well well suited to you. If we had if we had had the the ceremony a hundred miles north of here, I would have gotten the Clam of the War. <laughs> So you showed the big, big uneasy. You're showing it uh, tonight, tonight, actually, and um, and you're showing this is Spinal Tap here mm -hmm. as well. And um, what is the future though for New Orleans in terms of how safe they are if another big hurricane comes? What are your concerns there? Uh, if I weren't concerned, I wouldn't have made the film. Yeah. Uh, this is not an academic exercise, no. and it's not just New Orleans, uh, Sacramento, California is in very much the same situation New Orleans was in. Uh, inside the core, people are speaking very darkly of the prospects for Sacramento. Uh, Sacramento is facing this spring a release of a record snowmelt uh, coming down and confronting the levees which are admitted by the core to be problematic. Uh, and of course, Sacramento sits atop the entire California water system. So, uh, I have no idea. Yeah. We showed it in Sacramento a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of people came. And uh, some of them knew what was going on there, and some of them walked out. Going. <sighs> Dallas, Texas, Corps announced a couple years ago their levees on the Trinity River are built on sand. Mm -hmm. As they were in New Orleans. Yes. Uh, it's about 100 cities around the country. So, New Orleans, 2005, had the media done their job would have served as a wake-up call for this country about all of this. Instead, thanks to the media, we get the snooze button. So I'm trying to reverse that process. So where are we going to be able to see this film? Uh, theatrically? We're rolling it out in theaters. To, uh, as we speak tonight, it's opening in Pittsburgh, in Lexington, Kentucky, Portland, Oregon. It's uh, playing at the festival in Ashland, and it will open theatrically here next week. It's playing in Brookings, Oregon. Uh, it's opening in cities across the country. It's a slow rollout so that I can be in a lot of places and do Q&As and kind of draw attention to the film. And television? Um, our plan is to do theatrical rollout first to get community uh, buzz in these, you know, in a lot of communities we're choosing to be get in. Get some reviews, get some coverage. Get reviews, but also, 
you know, we're, we're playing a lot of areas where there are problems with the core and hoping to energize and, and bring these groups that are fighting the core together to realize it's not their own, their, their lonely little fight. Um, and then have a story to tell uh, this summer when we make a TV and, and uh, DVD and, and online deal. Now, how, how did you think Spike did with, with his coverage of, of Katrina? Well, Spike, you know. Spike Lee. Yes, of course. As opposed to Spike Milligan or Spike Jones or those are my the spikes I know, uh, the other spikes. Spike is um, an outsider. And I think he brought an outsider's perspective. So, for example, when he gave oxygen to the, uh, let's call it a canard, that um, the levees were dynamited deliberately, which he did give oxygen to. Conspiracy. Conspiracy. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he was aware that all uh, of two things, that the two scientific investigations found absolutely no evidence to support that and that the uh, propensity of some people in New Orleans to believe that theory uh, draws upon actual experience in New Orleans history in 1927 when the Mississippi River flooded, uh, a very serious flood, and the city fathers of New Orleans were quite worried that the city was imperiled. They prevailed upon the uh, core and the, the parishes downriver, St. Bernard Parish, and, and uh, Plaquemine Parish, parishes or counties in Louisiana, to uh, dynamite the levees downriver to take the pressure off the river, therefore averting the probability of a flood in New Orleans. So there is that in the city's history. It's documented in John Barry's seminal book, uh, Rising Tide. That's part of the lore of the city. So that's why a theory like that could gain some credence. But for Spike to come in from New York and, and uh, give that theory oxygen without explaining the, the basis of it, uh, I thought was. And I think, you know, like most of the New York-based media, he preferred to focus on the suffering and the emotion. The people stories. The people stories. Well, this, these are all people stories. I mean, when people fuck up, that's a people story. Not as, not as, as accessible, though. It's I mean, not a tearjerker. You do get it's, into wonky descriptions of yeah, but we also pile drivers. Yeah, but we will also show you the people who are defending this stuff, yes. and you get to make a judgment about what kind of people those are. Right. Also, I think Spike was influenced by the New York-based media's uh, failure to go beyond logistical convenience in covering the original story. That is to say, the African-American people who were suffering were uh, located mainly in the convention center and the Superdome, two locations within a, a five-minute drive of an off-ramp from Interstate 10. Mm -hmm. The mixed communities, black and white, in uh, Broadmoor and Gentilly, the well-to-do white community in Lakeview, the poor and working-class white community in St. Bernard Parish, all these people were flooded out. They were on their roofs. Uh, didn't for four days coverage. without food and water and 100 degree heat. They weren't near a freeway off ramp. They were in a city with a confusing street grid where parallel streets intersect. And most of the people, virtually all the people who came in to cover the story were out of towners. I remember the first day, CNN had a guy in the Central Business District uh, standing there and his first words were, I'm here in the French Quarter and I knew he had nothing more to tell me. Uh, so Spike, I think, amplified that part of the story, that this was a, an African-American story. Uh -huh. And it wasn't. It was an everybody story. 80% of a metropolitan area was flooded. 100% of a suburban county was flooded. This was an everybody story. And I think by emphasizing the, that angle, the story was doubly marginalized in the minds of Americans. This was an exotic place. This was a weird part of a weird section of the country. And it was those people. And I think that all served to sap the political will of Americans to sort of hitch up and say, this can't happen in this country, this is us. We did this to us, we paid nearly a billion dollars to, to do this to us. The usness, I think, was what was lacking in the coverage. But they also bought the natural catastrophe. Yes, right, and, and, and I think those two things- in fact our own would have, right. supposed expertise That's that correct. was brought to bear That's correct. So to fix the situation. what are you gonna do about that? Right. Next. Right, right. No, uh, yeah. Brian Williams used to complain on his blog. He was getting emails from viewers 
saying, enough with this Katrina already. Why are you laying on this Katrina? And he never bothered to say why you should care. Here's why you should care. You paid to do this. So Treme also brought some of this anger. I, I, I was a big admirer of this series. Mm -hmm. It's almost like your voice is in, is in the John Goodman character. Yes, and, and I, I thought, you know, it was, it was lovely that John Goodman's character uh, said these things, and then we came along, and, and uh, so you could sort of find out the factual basis behind his ranting. It wasn't just a, a guy off his meds. Um, and he helped you on this one as well. He did a you cameo. You some other voices. I had some New Orleanians uh, helping out, Brad. Brad Pitt, uh, Jennifer Coolidge, Wendell Pierce, and, and one ringer from out of state, uh, Will Lyman, who uh, you might recognize as the voice of Frontline. <laughs> uh, but uh, I do think that, that uh, Treme has been a mixed blessing in a way because uh, it's allowed HBO when we approach them with this film to say, no, we've done New Orleans. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, the, and, the, and when the Levy, Levy's brought up the Spike Lee movie, it's yeah, there, so but, as well. you know. Uh, that's like. Uh, no, I'd love them to be able to. Sh uh, people need to see this. Um, yeah. So I wish you the best on that. Thank you. And uh, enjoy, enjoy Ashland, and, and, and thank you for sharing all of this. Thanks. I appreciate it.